Pooh could Benny had to choose between fighting devils and fighting horny guys. So yeah, let's talk about it. Hello everyone and welcome back to another bloody review of Chainsaw Man. This episode again had less fighting, but it had more crucial information to the story and a lot of character development and interactions. And of course, power is as shameless as ever. And also, who is the real Chainsaw Man? Follow me here for shorts and also on TikTok for more updates. And now, let's jump to this week's episode. Jumping back to the 8th floor, where the hunters are currently still stuck on. The group checks the other rooms and windows to try to find a way out, but they soon find out that everything leads back to the same floor. In addition, the clocks are all stuck on the same time. If they are somehow stuck in time, it means that no one will be coming to save them. We can see how the stress is starting to slowly take effect over the group in different ways. The most apparent is Kobeni, who is already scared of everything, so this situation only intensifies her anxiety. We also get a little taste of her past. We find out that her parents favored her older brother, and in order to send him to college, Kobeni had to help finance it. It was either fighting devils or fighting off horny guys all day long. Which, by the way, great parenting. But it also shows Kobeni doesn't want to be there. She always wanted to go to college herself, but never got that privilege. While Kobeni is breaking down, power is only getting more playful. That shows how much devils love fear and anxiety, and that is important for later events in this episode. The group knows the little devil from before can't be the cause of this situation because when they die, their effect should be gone. So there must be another devil in charge of them being stuck, but for some reason, they don't get any gun flash activity detected. So Denji naturally goes to sleep until they figure out a way to continue. Denji doesn't seem to be affected by fear like the other members of the group. He simply doesn't care about anything. I love how Aki is amazed he can just fall asleep in this situation, and I guess this careless behavior is something Aki himself is missing. By the time Denji wakes up, the group members are even in a worse condition, and Kobeni and Arai are both in bed. Like Denji, Power also seems to be unaffected and looks playful as ever. Aki is patrolling the corridors while constantly smoking. And to all non-smokers out there, this is a clear sign of stress. So he is not like Kobeni and Arai, but he is also affected on some level. From there we jump to a flashback of him and Imano for the first time she offered him a smoke. Aki doesn't want to even try. He knows smoking is bad for you. But knowing devil hunters die so often, does it really worth it to be worried about cigarettes? That is Himeno's perspective, at least. But Aki assures her he is not planning on dying soon, and that works pretty fine with Himeno. She lost so many partners, so him surviving and living as much as he can is something very important to her. That's why she always tells him to not die. Later, she gets slapped by the wife of one of her dead partners, but Himeno is okay with that. Those people lost loved ones and they have no one to blame, so they lash at her, and she understands why. But when Aki sees that, he sticks a piece of gum on that lady's clothes, as a very small revenge to make him and O feel better. That act makes them come closer together. Later she tells him that devils are not afraid of the powerful devil hunters, they fear the crazy devil hunters much more. She thinks this is the reason why Aki will survive, implying he is a bit crazy and devils will be scared of him. We see them getting more friendly over time and Aki agrees to smoke his first cigarette. This alone shows how comfortable he feels with her, especially because he is such a strict individual. He promises this is the first and last cigarette in his life. But of course, that never happened. Aki soon runs out of cigarettes and goes asking Himeno if she had some left, but like him, she smoked them all too. The devil from before appears again, but this time it seems much bigger. He offers the group a contract to give up Denji, and then the rest can go free. We see how Kobeni is the weakest link, as she immediately offers to sacrifice Denji and tries to stab him, but she is stopped by Himeno and Aki. The body of Aki's fox devil apparently is in Kyoto, so Aki can't summon it now when they stuck in this situation. Himeno uses her ghost devil instead, which seems to really hurt the devil, but also makes him much bigger. This is not his main body, they are inside his stomach, they can't reach his heart, so they can't kill it. He explains to them that the only way out is to accept the contract and give up Denji. Contracts are strong, and if some side breaks it, they will die. It means that sacrificing Denji will definitely save the rest of the group. 
by now Arai is also losing it and he agrees they should sacrifice Denji and run away. Power of course also wants Denji dead because, well, she's power. But that is actually so funny when she says she wants him dead. But when Aki refuses, she's disappointed but immediately offers Denji to play. Denji is obviously angry about that. You can't promote someone's death and then be friendly with them. But that just puts more emphasis on the fact that power, even when being friendly, is still a fiend with devilish behavior. But anyway, Aki and Imano are strongly against that, especially if the devil wants it so much. They are devil hunters and they don't kill humans, so they sit in the hallway trying to figure out a way. Aki offers to use his sword, but Himeno strongly refuses for him to use it. She actually considers letting Denji die before Aki uses his sword. Meanwhile, the panic level rises, power antagonizes Arai, Kobeni is acting delusional and they all get into a fight fueled by fear. This situation makes the devil grow and start advancing. We learn this is the eternity devil and fear makes him stronger. The devil demands to be the one that kills the chainsaw man. And here I had a thought. Who is exactly this chainsaw man he is referring to? I was sure this form by Denji is the chainsaw man, but the devil hasn't seen it. So is he referring to Puchita or maybe to the way Puchita used to look like in the past? Also, why is he so fixated on killing the chainsaw man? Was it like some extremely special devil? That makes me think about Denji and it seems that a lot of people are interested in him. First Makima and now this devil, so I have to question why. I hope we'll get more info on that soon. Back to the episode, the room starts spinning, turning into something like an elevator shaft, with the devil waiting for them at the bottom. The group is in panic. Kobeni and Arai demand they will sacrifice Denji and Aki again wants to use his sword. Here we learn that by using this sword, Aki is cutting off his own lifespan and Himeno is not willing to accept that. For her, Aki needs to live much longer, so taking part of his life is unacceptable. She tells Denji she is sorry. She holds Aki with the ghost devil and she is willing to let Denji die before she sacrifices part of Aki's life. Again, this is such a big sign of how much they mean and care for each other. Kobeni then goes out for Denji and tries to stab him, but stabs Aki who jumps in front of him. That obviously surprises everyone, especially Denji. Like Aki, Denji is also after killing the gun devil. Aki knows he needs help to kill it and that's why losing some of his life is worth more than letting Denji die. In simple words, without Denji, Aki can't reach his dream of avenging his family. And with that, he ties his dream with Denji. Denji tells Power to help Aki with his blood loss and Himeno gets a sudden flashback of crows in the graveyard. By now we see that Himeno, which seemed to be the stable one in this group, is also starting to break apart under this entire situation. Denji decides to go for it, showing again how he is not affected by fear like the others and is also willing to risk himself for people who want him to die. But of course, he also reminds Himeno that he still wants that kiss if he makes it. Denji can't believe Aki saved him, he didn't ask him to and he doesn't want to owe him anything, so after this, they will be even. Denji remembers the devil was very sensitive to pain when the ghost devil attacked him. He also realizes this devil might be afraid of his chainsaw. This is why he didn't try to kill Denji himself and let his friend do it for him. If they can't kill him, then Denji has a simple plan. To inflict so much pain on this devil until he will want to kill himself and release them. He then pulls on his ignition cord and drops down into the many mouths of the eternity devil. And that is where this very informative episode ends. And pay attention, we also got a different ending thing with a concept of endless stairs, which I believe represents eternity or whatever. But still, this is a nice touch. We saw Mappa do this also for power and I can't wait to see which theme we'll see in future episodes. What did you think about this episode and what was your favorite moment? Let me know in the comments. And that is all for this video, my chainsaw loving friends, and I hope you enjoyed. I will see you all real soon in my next video and even sooner in the comments. And until then, let me just remind you all to dedicate your hearts to all of humanity, inside and outside the walls.